What's up everyone? My name is Forsaken and today we have a list. A metro list. And if the internet has taught me anything, people cannot resist when things are placed sequentially. So let's begin with our top five metro early game tips. Number five. Be aware of your equipment. You should return to weapon benches frequently and habitually. Nothing is worse than realizing your magazines are empty and you are out of meds when the building you just wandered into has a horde of mutants waiting inside. Now you can make meds and ammo for the Tikar in the field, which is the only reason I actually carry this gun. But if you want any other rounds or throwable items, grenades, knives, tin cans, you have to visit a bench. And do not neglect to clean your weapons. You may not always have enough chemicals to feel comfortable spending so much, but a clean weapon is a happy weapon, and a happy weapon will keep you alive. Dirt affects weapons in various ways, depending upon the weapon type. It could be damage or accuracy, or <laughs> the most infuriating one, which is a chance for your weapon to actually jam. Number four, do not underestimate stealth. Outside one of the early tutorial missions, this game doesn't force you to play stealthily. Short of a few passive-aggressive comments, there is no penalty so far that I have come across for not playing a mission stealthily. I don't care for stealth games. I find them to be boring, with the exception of Bethesda titles. I always roll as a stealth archer in any Elder Scrolls games. But with that said, even if you hate that style of gameplay, you should stealth kill whenever it is presented. If for just one single reason, the return on your investment is 100%, costing you nothing. If you get a few stealth kills in an engagement, you can save yourself 20 to 30 rounds easy. Unless you have the skill to land headshots consistently, or you're rolling with a shoddy. And that's not to mention all the meds that you'll save. And if you extrapolate that over time, doing that consistently, each engagement, getting a few stealth kills, saving yourself the ammo, saving yourself the meds, over the course of your game, it's gonna add up pretty significantly. Number three, loot everything. If you have played the previous Metro games, you know ammo is a scarce resource. Now, let me disclose that I play this game on normal difficulty, and at least on normal difficulty, ammo just really isn't a huge problem in this game. If you loot everything. Every person, every crate, every box, shelf, random pile of shit, every odd hole in the wall, you'll do fine. The most important thing is to break down any guns that you come across. Not only will you harvest parts for crafting, you will take equipment components and any spare ammo within the weapons. This adds up quickly. Number two, choose your battles carefully. When considering enemy engagements, you should always consider your return on investment, meaning how many of your resources can you expect to spend compared to what you stand to gain in return? Your highest return on investment is always going to be engaging with humans. Humans always have gear, and typically the areas in which you find them will have a considerable amount of loot. So you can loot their bodies, and you can break down their weapons. Buildings with nests of monsters inside offer a poor return on your investment. You cannot loot non-human enemies as far as I have come across. If they are inhabiting a building, you can find some environmental loot. Not as much as you're going to in areas where there are human enemies though. And engaging non-human enemies in the wild is only a net loss and should be avoided at all times. And number one, shotgun for the win. I love the shotgun in this game. I don't care for them so much in PvP games, 
but I just adore them in any type of PvE game, single player or otherwise. And a shotgun is the most powerful weapon early game. I say early game because I'm still in that phase, and I'm sure later on there might be some god weapon that I haven't found yet that might put it to shame. But the reason I love this so much is because the shotgun is the most cost-effective weapon. The shells are easily found, and they're cheap to make. With the fact that they do so much damage, the amount of shells required to kill somebody and take their resources is minimal. And, like, I have this sneaking suspicion that the mutants have a weakness to the shotgun. Like, I will put a clip from the AK into these dudes, and they'll just laugh at me, you know, throwing their bricks at me from the distance. But you pull the shoddy out, and they just faint. Now, you heard the top five, but the video isn't over yet. I'm sure you're asking yourself, what madness is this? Well, it's bonus time, of course. The algorithm says that 10 minute long videos perform the best, so that's what we're gonna get, like it or not. And the bonus is going to be showing you the absolute easiest first place to get the shotgun. They are fairly common once you get going, but this is by far the simplest way to get it, I think. You will spawn here at your train. Now, the first mission area is going to be up here, and your second ones are going to be down here generally. There are a lot of mutants that you'll come across in these missions, and the village mission, you know, depending on your playstyle, you may not want to murder everybody. Someone there could have a shotgun. I didn't come across it because I kind of, <laughs> when I did it, I didn't really want really to kill everybody. They weren't bandits, you know, they're just living their lives. They're some backward anti-techno cult, you know. So I let most of them live. The place you want to go is straight east along the tracks. All right, there, right here, there is a crossing point. And you can't see it because it's behind my lens and I have since passed this area so I cannot go back to review this map to get you an unobstructed view. But once you cross this area, there is immediately going to be to your right a little compound. There are approximately five people. They're pretty spread out, pretty out in the open. You don't have to worry about, you know, being ambushed around corners or anything like that. And that's where you're gonna find your first shotgun. I recommend going there as the very first thing you do because it's going to make everything much easier. Now the person specifically that I found my shotgun on on the very back side of the facility, there's a little house. And when you exit this house, or, well, shack, you can look up and it's the very back corner, there's a little platform. And you see this guy here. Quick headshot, it's quick work. There's also another person on the second floor. It's another trivial task. He's approximately in the center of the facility. You'll see me take him out here. Bop, bop. I mean, I think the one took him out, but always double tap. Here's your way up. At first it wasn't obvious to me because of how steep the grade is. Go over here, and he actually had two weapons. I almost pass up getting the shotgun for keeping my pistol because I look back to the first Metro game where you had a silenced pistol and it was OP throughout almost the whole game because you could headshot people and drop them or you could use it to take out light sources. When I am completely comfortable knowing that I am not gonna be in a position where I'm going to readily run out of ammo, I will get rid of the Taka, I believe it's called. It's silent and you wanna keep it because you can make that ammo on the fly without having to go back to a workbench but the pistol has so much power. But, previously, actually, it would be in the future in reference to this clip. I have a LMG, well, I find an LMG, and I try to swap my AK for it. But since they are built off of the same platform, 
they would not allow me to have both weapons. So if I cannot have some variant of the pistol and the shotgun, I'm just gonna roll with the gauge. Cause it's gonna get better. And the Taka is probably gonna get better anyways to make it more of a feasible weapon to carry around to use regularly. And that was five Metro Exodus beginner tips plus one. I hope it helped. I hope my tips helped you progress further into the game because after you leave the starting zone, it blows wide open. If I missed something, or you think it could have been explained better, please put it in the comments. Hopefully somebody can come along and see your comment and you can help them where I failed. Either way, thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time.